Okay, so this Kina is a completely uh, new track that we're going on over here. Generally speaking, when it comes to the idea of Tisha B'av, there's two aspects to the idea of mourning. There's number one, which we've been doing until now, is to focus on the destruction, what happened on the negative sense. And then there's number two, is to focus on what the Yerushalayim was like, what the world was like before the destruction. Why is that so important? Is let's say, God forbid, a person has to memorialize a loved one. There's one part is to feel the pain, but there's another part is to remember who they were while they were alive and to realize why you miss them. So over here, what he's doing by these keynotes, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi, it's very interesting. He was, you could say, the most Sioni sage. If you'll notice the Rambam, when he wrote uh, Mor Nevuchim, he only mentions, in the whole Mor Nevuchim, he only mentions Eretz Yisrael one time. Rabbeinu Bachya, Bachaya, excuse me, in Chovos Alavavos, he doesn't mention Eretz Yisrael at all. Rabbi Yehuda Halevi, not only does he mention Eretz Yisrael in the Kuzari, but he actually takes it to a completely different level. He doesn't just speak about Eretz Yisrael in the halachic aspect like the Ramban, but he actually passionately and poetically expresses his love for Eretz Yisrael. There's actually a legend that they say it's not completely verified that the part that is verified is that he was a very well-known um, person where he lived. I believe it was in Spain, in Muslim Spain. And he was a very high-level guy. He was very wealthy. He was very connected in the government. And he always dreamed to go to Eretz Yisrael. And he knew that at that time it was a very dangerous endeavor. Sure enough, they say that he actually left everything behind in Muslim Spain to be able to go to Eretz Yisrael. And when he arrived there, he was kissing the ground. And as he went to kiss the ground, he kissed the floor. And a Bedouin rider came by and actually ran him over. And he died right there, fulfilling his lifelong dream in that moment. That part is not, it's a legend, they say. What he does over here in this kina is he actually starts off by saying a bit of a, a sarcastic line, which brings out a very powerful idea that I'm sure if you look around the room today, you look around there at Yisrael today, you see is definitely true. He says, Tzion, halo tishali, he says, Tzion, surely you will ask, you will inquire after the well-being of your prisoners. So the question is, wait a second. If they're prisoners, they're not prisoners of Tzion, they're prisoners of the Babylonians or the Romans, depending on which destruction you're talking about. They're not prisoners of Tzion. What is he saying? Is that the Jewish people forever, our hearts and our souls and our bodies are captives of Eretz Yisrael, no matter where we go. All over the world, we could have the best life in England, America, Australia, South Africa, whatever it is. But Sion captures our hearts. To come here and leave behind your life and everything you have, basically like a Rabbi Huda Halevi, it's an incredible thing. And he says to Sion, he's saying, we are your captives. We're attached to you forever. And the question is, have you been asking about us? We for sure are, are attached to you. But have you been asking about us? And we'll get to that in a moment. He says over here, Se'i Mikol Avarayif, which means they're promoted from every direction. This is again emphasizing the idea how for over 1900 years, the Jewish people, no matter where they have gone, have always been attached and connected to Eretz Yisrael. By the way, Netanya, if I'm not mistaken, because we're here right now, Netanya, I believe, has the highest percentage in the whole Israel of foreigners, of Olim, not specifically from English-speaking countries, but from all over. I think Netanya is over 70%, if I'm not mistaken. Probably a lot of French and Ukrainian and Russian, but altogether over 70% Olim from all over the world. A real kibbutz galiot over here on the beach. <laughs> he says that, oh, so his question before that he asked, he said, wait a second, we're captives to you, but are you, are you caring about us? Are you asking about us? So he answers his question. He says, there's a famous medrash that it says in Vayikra, and I will make the land desolate and your enemies that dwell in it will be astonished. What is this referring to? Eretz Yisrael, Israel, whatever you want to call it, whatever they called it before was taken back, whatever the word is, was captured by the Romans, by the Byzantines, by the Muslims, by the Crusaders. It even was tried to be colonized by the Germans and during World War I until the British beat them. And then it was tried to be colonized by the British. And the British had colonized full continents. And yet you see that Israel did not flourish and did not sprout until the Jewish people returned which means there's a promise that he's asking Eretz Yisrael, do you care about us? We care about you. And Israel says, no matter who comes, it doesn't matter if it's the British who are probably some of those prolific colonizers in the whole world of massive continents that were founded by the British, and they could come to this little piece of land and they could not make it happen. And it shows you that this land 
has stayed completely loyal to the Jewish people for all time, waiting for us to return. And when we have returned, the land has sprouted and completely been booming on a level which is beyond everyone knows about the high tech and everything. It's really an incredible thing to witness. Then he mentions another part. He says, Libi Lebes Kel, which over here he's referring to something amazing. He talks about in this kina two aspects of Eretz Yisrael that he's obsessed with and he's in love with. Number two is the physical nature. And number th uh, number one, excuse me, is the physical nature. Number two is the spiritual nature. He says, physically, the nature of Israel, when you come in, the land is imbued with spirituality. The, the physical air, the oxygen that you breathe in Israel, not even in a spiritual sense, is physically different than anywhere else in the whole world. And that's why in this kina, he continues to mention how it's his it's his biggest passion to come and to kiss the rocks of Eretz Yisrael, to kiss the ground of Eretz Yisrael, just to be here was his, his greatest passion and dream. In a spiritual sense, he says the air of Eretz Yisrael is imbued with Ruach HaKodesh. He says the only reason why all of us are not prophets is because not necessarily do we want to be. But if we want it to be, he said the air is imbued with a natural Ruach HaKodesh that is there for everyone to tap into whenever they would like to. And again, he continues this idea where he says, Pasach Lamul Shachak Sharayach, which this is referring to how everybody who prays in the entire Jewish world, no matter where you are, if it's in Europe, America, China, Africa, no matter where it is, you're facing to Eretz Yisrael. You're facing to the center. And when you're in Eretz Yisrael, you're facing to Yerushalayim. When you're Yerushalayim, you're facing the Harabayas. Everything goes through here. These are where we are right now. This is the gates to heaven. So he says he wants to be in this place because he's obsessed with this land. And in addition, he points out many different reasons where he says, another thing he mentions is the fact of who's buried here. He says, Hebron, that this is the place where the forefathers are buried. He mentions, he mentions Har Har, which is today in Jordan, Har Avarim, where Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron are buried, which is focusing on, focusing on this idea, how where they are buried is a very holy place. And then he says, he says, Yin'am l'nafshi haloch aron v'yachef alei charvosh mama. He said, it would be pleasant for me to walk naked and barefoot upon the desolate ruins. Meaning, he was a very high-level minister in Spain. He would rather be naked walking barefoot in the land in Eretz Yisrael, even in ruins, than to be walking in the finest clothing and the finest shoes in the most luxurious places in Spain. So what's the focus that we're trying to bring out on this keynote? Is that over here, after the keynote that we've done until now, where we're supposed to feel the pain, we're trying to channel it towards a vision, towards a goal. That we're not just saying that we want, because when pain comes out, we have to channel it, we have to focus. We can't just be going to a, God forbid, if pain can become overwhelming, it can lead to depression. How do we ensure that it doesn't lead to depression? Is that we have a vision, we say we're taking all this pain that we've gone through and all this suffering, and we're channeling it towards the future and saying that we are going to be in this land once again, when it will be like it was before, when it will be in a state of Geula, in a place of ultimate redemption and Mashiach, when we will be reunited as we're feeling all the pain of all the loss of October 7th, Simchat Torah, and everything that's happened in the Jewish history of the Holocaust, I think we're about to say a keynote for the, 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 those who were killed and murdered in the Holocaust. What we're saying now is that we have a vision of a time when we will be reunited with all of them. It's known that one of the most focal points of Mashiach is Tchiyat Tabesim, the resurrection of the dead. And actually someone was telling me, oh, as it says, you know, your soul has come down many different times. Who's going to come back? There's a place where it explains Tchiyat means every single physical human being. If the soul has to divide into different bodies, that's fine. The soul is a piece of God. It can divide up. It's not a problem. Every single physical human being that was living on this earth is going to come back in the final Gula of Mashiach. So God willing, it will be very soon and speedily in our days. We will be able to channel this and the Tishbab will become the happiest day of the year instead of the saddest day of the year. So, hello, uh, uh, it's on page. Three, two, nine. Zion, hello, Lishlom, Asirai, Roshay, Shlom, Ephraim, Yetera, Dorai, Miyamu, Mizrak, Mitzafon, Betayman, Dom Rahok, Akarov, Sri Nikola, Dorai.
שם השכינה שכונה לך ויוצרך פתח למול שערי שחת שערייך וכבוד אדוני לבד היה מאורייך ואין צהב השמש וכוכבים מאורייך אלך לנפשי להשתחק במקום אשר רוח אלוהים שפוכה על מחירייך עד בית מר מלוכה ועד כיסא כבודך ואיך ישבו עבדים עלי כיסאות גבירייך מי ייתן לי משוטי מקומות אשר נגלו אלים לחוזה זייך וצירייך מי יעשה לי כנפיים וארחיק נדוד אני לביטרי לבבי ואין בצרייך איפה להפיע לי ארצך וארצה אבנייך ללמוד ואחונן את עפרייך אך כי בעומדי עלי קברות אבותי ואשתומם עלי חברו מבקר ובראייך ההרים בהור ההר אשר שם שני הורים גדולים מאורייך ומאורייך חיי נשמות אוויר ארצך וממר דורו רבקה תפרך ונופת צוף נרייך הינם לנפשי הלוך ארון ויחף עלי חורבות שממה אשר היה דבירייך במקום ארוניך אשר נגנז ובמקום קרובייך אשר שכנו חדרי חדרייך הגוז האשליך ואין נזר ועקוב זמן חילל בארץ בבל את נזירייך איך ירד לי החור בשדות בית החזה כי חסרו הכלבים את נזירייך או איך מאוד יום יהי מתוק בעיניי ועוד ערב בפי עורבים ויגרי בשורייך כוס היגונים לאט חרפי מעט כי כבר מלאו חסליים ראשי למורי רייך עת אזכרה עולה אשתך אמורך ואזכרה עולה אבה באמצע עת שמרייך ציון קהילת יופי אהבה ואין עוררי לימוד ובך נקשרו נפשות חבירייך האם השמחים לשלוותך והכואבים על שעומתייך בוכים על שברייך מבור שבי שואפים נגדך ומשתחווים איש ממקומו עלי נוכח שערייך הדרי המוני חשק עלו ותברזו מהר לגבעה ולא שפכו בדירייך המחזיקים בשולח ומתאמצים לעלות ולאכות בסמציני תמרייך שינה ופטרוס היה רפוחה בגדלים עם חבלה מימי לתומייך ואורייך על מי ידמו משיחייך ועל מי נביאייך ועל מי לביאך ושירייך ישנה וחלום וכלל כל ממלכות האלילים חוסנך לעולם לדור ודור נזירייך היווה למשה ולא הייך ואשרי אינו שבחה ויקרא וישכון בחצירייך אשרי מחכה ויגיע וירא עלות הורייך ויבקעו על אך שחרייך לראות בטובת בחירייך לעלות בשמחתך ושובך אלי כמות נעורייך. אוקיי, אני צריך להסתור. אבל אני לא יודע.